What I'd like to do today is take the opportunity to talk a little bit about CCD sensors and also how they compare with the newer CMOS sensors. And this is particularly relevant to us now at Attic as we've introduced the Attic Horizon CMOS camera. It's our first uh, CMOS camera. Before we get into the depths about what the differences are between the two cameras, it's probably worthwhile just reminding ourselves of the similarities. Uh, these are both cameras that are optimised for deep sky astroimaging. Uh, they have cooled silicon sensors. We cool them to reduce the read noise. And they run with all the same software uh, between the two of them. So in many ways there's many more similarities between these cameras and there are differences. But there are some important differences as well. So one of the key differences between these two technologies uh, is the requirement for more calibration files with new CMOS images. Uh, the CMOS chips have lots of different circuits on them, which means the pixels get treated differently from each other, which needs a little bit of calibration in terms of bias frames and dark frames. Also, we have some amp glow that's a residual from the circuits that we can't shut down on the CMOS sensor. So the CMOS sensor needs a little bit more calibration than CCD sensors. Uh, on the plus side, we're able to leverage the fact that these are much more consumer uh, devices uh, and you get a lot for your money. So if we look at sensor size, the slide here shows the relative uh, sizes of the different sensors in the cameras uh, in the attic range. So we start off with the 3 and 4 and 4 and 4, got the 416, 490 of a similar size. The APS size chips, 383 and Horizon, and then uh, the bigger cameras above that. And then on the bottom, I've got the multiple of the 4 and 4 pricing. So a 460 camera costs roughly twice the price of a 4 and 4 camera. And the interesting thing here is that the 383 and the Horizon cost between one and one and a half times the price of a 4 and 4. They're cheaper than the cameras that are actually smaller than them. So the 383 and the Horizon, the new CMOS camera, uh, offer very good value for money in terms of the sensor size and the air of the sky that they can take a picture of. Uh, that's sensor sizing. Uh, next thing to look at is the, some of the flexibility we have with the uh, Horizon camera in terms of its gain. So if we look at gain, the reason for wanting to control the gain of the Horizon camera is to reduce the read noise. Now we've produced another video that goes into a little bit more detail uh, than we do here. Uh, that video is on our website and we'll also post a link to it uh, in the description of um, this video. Uh, also on this a table what I've done is I've compared the Horizon to the uh, 460 CCD camera. So taking a single exposure, the 460 has a read noise around 5 electrons. But the Horizon in low gain mode has 3.5 electrons worth of read noise. And if we turn the gain up, we get down to just one electron read noise from the Horizon, which is a very, very low value indeed. I have heard it said that that value is so low that you can stack any number of these images and you don't effectively add any noise. Well, that's not strictly true. Uh, what we've also done here is to simulate the noise associated with a stack of 40 sub-exposures. So in order to get back to a simulated full well of 20,000 electrons from the horizon in high gain mode, we'd need to stack 40 sub-exposures. And that resulting stack would have six electron read noise. And that's higher than taking a single exposure that has the 20,000 well depth anyway. And it's also higher than the 460 CCD. So if the goal is to get high dynamic range, the way to do it is not to turn the gain on the horizon up. However, if we are restricted to taking shorter exposures, and that could be because the mount isn't tracking very well, uh, or, or any other reason, maybe it's not as with mount. Uh, so we want to take short exposures, then it's better to use the horizon because then we only have six electron read noise. Whereas if we use the 460 to stack a lot of 40 short exposures, would be right up there at 31 electron read noise. So the Attic Horizon with its CMOS sensor really is the right choice if we're restricted to doing shorter exposure uh, imaging. One of the questions I get asked from time to time from people considering buying a camera within the Attic range, should they choose a CMOS camera or one of the CCD cameras? It's a very simple question. It's got a relatively complicated answer. But uh, probably the easiest group of people to advise are people who already have a cool CCD camera. Uh, then I suggest try the Attic Horizon. Uh, it's a very different camera. You'll be able to do some, uh, some very low read noise narrowband imaging. 
or try some lucky imaging with short up length exposures. Uh, also, the haptic horizon has a very large chip and very small pixel size. So that really does suit uh, shorter focal length telescopes and doing wide field imaging through those. Where the traditional CCD cameras are still very much on a roll is in things like ease of processing. So typically we don't need to bother with uh, dark frames with the uh, Sony based CCD cameras. Also, we can bin freely with these cameras, so we can adapt very well to longer focal length telescopes, or to doing techniques like LRGB imaging, where we would bin some of the colour channels. Uh, so there we have it, uh, CCD cameras and CMOS cameras. Uh, choose basically a camera that suits your style of imaging, and then enjoy astrophotography. Thank you.